Who's that? There's something weird happening in the jungle. If you, if you get this, get this footage. Tell the people that the jungle is called. If you are in the jungle, don't wear short pants. Cause bees can bite you, give you unpleasant tan. If you are in the jungle, still wearing short pants. Then put some cream on your leg as a mosquito repellent. Come prepared to tell someone where you are. Cause time can change very fast and our cars can be so far. Jungle, jungle. Hello and welcome back to the second episode of Rocking Around the Rocks with that totally awesome and rocking jungle song which was composed and written by Barsh. Barsh, Barsh. Anyways, let's go back to the end of the first episode and you remember how I said that with the road to Uberstar the Lighthouse, I found the road to rock and roll. That's because in the same campus was an awesome exhibition about guitar building in the area of Rogaland. Now, this is the same area which has Yaran and also has the awesome hiking spot called the Pulpit Rock. Let me give you some information if you choose to accept it. Aha! Well, in the movie Mission Impossible Fallout, this was the area which was shown as India. And no, this is not India. It's a very delightful hiking spot here in Norway. But don't worry about it. We are going to cover it in our future episodes because it does fall around a national tourist road. Well, coming back to the exhibition, the exhibition itself had tons of information about Norwegian guitars, Norwegian guitar makers, or just about guitar in general. Even though all the guitars in the exhibition were really cool, there were some which stood out for me. For example, this double neck guitar from Hans Angel, which is a unique double neck guitar, kind of making it his own invention. All these really cool looking guitars from Ivar, who was a lighthouse keeper with Ubristad Lighthouse for 22 years and he made 43 Hawaiian guitars, including this really cool and interesting one. It's called the frying pan guitar. If you think that frying pan guitar looks weird, then just have a look at this one. It's made by Mr. Yusuf San and it looks like a shovel. And man, I really hope one day I get the chance to play this. Just when I thought I have seen it all, these two guitars took me by surprise. The right one is a guitar with long horn and the left one is called Harding guitar, inspired by the Norwegian instrument Hardanga fiddle. So in short, if a musician's heaven has a red room, the red room would definitely look like this. Before we move forward, Basha sent me a video thanking our sponsors. I, I didn't know they existed. Anyways, have a look at it, enjoy! What the... Coming back to the lighthouse, it is a lighthouse made in 1873 and is built around the famous yard and stone beaches. The lighthouse and the living quarters were built in solid granite to avoid maintenance. But it turned out it was not a very wise idea to build living quarters in granite. The house turned out to be damp, cold and not very pleasant place to live. That's why later on, a wooden lightkeeper's house and a wooden lightkeeper's family home was built to tackle the problem. Today, 
The Granite Building is a museum and there are exhibitions about everyday life at the lighthouse. In the basement, there are murals painted by German soldiers during World War II as the entire lighthouse facilities were used as a part of German coastal defense system. The Ubristad Lighthouse also has served as a weather station since 1918. Now, there is a lot of information hanging on the walls of the lighthouse, but the problem is that most of the information is in Norwegian, which is not so much good for the international travelers because they will likely miss out on some really really cool stuff and facts. For example, if you go to the upper floors of the lighthouse, you will find a machine right out of a scientist chemistry lab, which in Norwegian is called as a Tvokalur or in English it becomes a foghorn. <laughs> Thank you, Porsche. A foghorn is a device that uses sound to warn vehicles of navigational hazards such as rocky coastlines or boats of the presence of other vessels in foggy conditions. Saying goodbye to the foghorn, the next stop was the light of the lighthouse. Now, the old lens apparatus from 1873 had a fixed light source with a flash, which means the light source stayed still while the lens rotated around it. But today, the light source is an LED light, which emits a continuous white light with every 30 seconds of intense white flash. After you are done exploring the light, please do not forget to step outside and enjoy the 360 degree view from the height of 128 feet. I think I forgot to tell you, the houses where the lighthouse keepers and their families lived are today rentable all the year round. So if you are looking for a unique stay arrangement, this, my friends, will definitely hit the bullseye. After saying goodbye to an awesome learning experience at Ubristad Lighthouse, I started traveling to its next door neighbor. It's called Hoa Old Vikarage or in Norwegian Hoa Gamla Prestegård. It is an art and cultural center housed in traditional listed buildings which provides an exciting area for contemporary artists like visual arts, installations, sculpture, handicrafts and cultural history exhibitions. The Vikarage is one of the most popular days out in Rogaland and an ideal starting point for adventure trips along the coast. The area next to the Vikarage not only has the remains of a settlement dating back 8200 years but it is also home to the finest burial grounds in the Nordic countries from approximately 300 to 700 AD. The burial mounds have different shapes and sizes and glass beads, spinning wheels and weapons have been found here. Oh and by the way, there are around 800 burial mounds along the coast on the Aran. That's <laughs> pretty cool isn't it? Passing right beside the Vicarage, you will also find the European North Sea Cycle Route number 12. So what is a European Bicycle Route? Well, a European Cycle Route is a network of 17 long distance cycle routes connecting and uniting the whole European continent. Comprising of a- oh, oh well, hello there. Well, comprising of over 90,000 kilometers of cycling itineraries, including the 7,050 kilometer damn tourist, including the 7,050 kilometers long European North Sea Cycle Route number 12, or uh, thank you, Barsh, or it is also known as the North Sea Cycle Route. Well, it's called North Sea Cycle Route because it is situated in countries surrounding the North Sea. What's happening here? He's a uh, As you know me. My name is uh, uh, my name is Barsh. Yes, uh, I am Ani's best friend. 
and uh, whenever someone talks about uh, bicycle and cycle route i become very emotional that's because when i was young i struggled driving the bicycle some doctors said that i had a disorder uh, but at the end no one was able to understand why why i was not able to drive the bicycle so what was the problem or the symptom you asked whole world it just turned black as soon as i sat on the bicycle like i was on the bicycle bush light out light out i couldn't see anything it was just total black and i went completely blind as soon as i sat on the bicycle now here is a video of my struggle from my younger days so that you can see me struggling i don't drive the bicycle anymore and i really hope that there comes a doctor one day a smart one uh, who can really diagnose the underlying issue of uh, of my condition so uh, thanks a lot for watching guys right after the week of age visit the weather started clearing up and the sun started coming out of the sky it's then and there i realized that i have to visit the location which is a bit of personal interest to me it's called the old cemetery of varhauk and it is described as one of the most beautiful cemeteries in the country so what was my personal interest well the norwegian alternative rock band called kaisers orchestra song evi pint was filmed here and i jumped out of excitement today after i realized that the cemetery was really close by the cemetery dates back to the middle ages and is listed as a cultural monument Just off the coast here was a shipwreck in 1842 that claimed 389 Russian lives. Most were buried here in Varhauk Old Cemetery, which is protected. The first church was probably built here around 1200, and since then several churches have stood by the cemetery. Today's chapel was erected in 1951. Since I do not have the photographs of chapel interior, I had to take help from the Visit Norway website. The chapel is over 15 meters square and is furnished with 14 traditional wicker chairs. The small chapel is often used for weddings. In the chapel hangs an old church bell from 1791. Cool, isn't it? Right beside the cemetery falls the 8.5 kilometers of walking path known as Kongevegen or the King's Way. Made around 1600s, the path is used to reach points like Ubrestad Lighthouse, Hoa Old Vicarage or this cemetery. This path, which goes through the coast, can be walked down in 3 hours and is a recommended way of reaching these places. There is something magical about watching a setting sun. After all, people stop their life and watch the sun going down. Some get lost in their thoughts. Some forget their pain. Some start finding answers. For me, it leads to asking more questions. After all, 